Let's look at the general reaction for electrophilic aromatic substitution. So we start with a benzene ring, and we react benzene with a molecule that contains an electrophile in there. And what happens in electrophilic aromatic substitution, we're going to substitute the electrophile for a proton on our benzene ring. And so over here, we can see the electrophile is now in place of that proton. So that's where, the, that's where the electrophilic part comes in, and that's where the substitution part comes in. You're substituting an electrophile for a proton. The aromatic comes in because you're going to reform an aromatic ring in your mechanism. Electrophilic aromatic substitution requires a catalyst, and the point of a catalyst is to generate your electrophile. So down here you can see that the catalyst is going to react to produce the positively charged electrophile. So remember, electrophile means loving electrons. So something is positively charged, it's going to love electrons. We also form this catalyst complex over here, which is going to factor into our mechanism. So now that we've formed our electrophile, let's look in more detail as to what happens in electrophilic aromatic substitution. So we start with our benzene ring. And I'm showing one of the hydrogens on the benzene ring. It could be any of the, of the six, since they are all equivalent. And now we formed our electrophile from our catalyst. So the pi electrons in the benzene ring can be attracted to the positively charged electrophile, because negative charges are attracted to positive charges. And so pi electrons in your benzene ring are going to function as a nucleophile, and, and those electrons are going to attack the electrophile. So this is a nucleophile-electrophile attack, where those pi electrons are going to bond to that electrophile there. So those pi electrons are going to form a covalent bond with your electrophile. So let's go ahead and show that. So these pi electrons didn't do anything. The hydrogen stays there. Now, I could show the electrophile adding to either of the two carbons on the side of the double bond. So it could be that carbon, or it could be this carbon. Since I've drawn this hydrogen up here at the top, I'm going to go ahead and say the electrophile adds to the top carbon there. So there's my electrophile. Let me go ahead and highlight the electrons that are forming that covalent bond. So these pi electrons here are the ones that are functioning as a nucleophile. And those pi electrons are going to form this bond right here. Now, in forming that bond, we're taking a bond away from this bottom carbon here. And so that bottom carbon is going to be left with a positive 1 formal charge. Therefore, we can draw a resonance structure for this cation. So let's go ahead and show a possible resonance structure here. So these pi electrons could move over to here. And let's go ahead and draw what would result if that happens. So now we have these pi electrons up here. We have our hydrogen. We have our electrophile. And the electrons moved over to this position. So let me go ahead and highlight those in magenta. So I'm saying that these pi electrons right here moved over to here. And when those electrons move over to there, we're taking a bond away from this carbon this time. So that is the carbon that's going to get a plus one formal charge like that. So we can draw another resonance structure. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so we could take these pi electrons and move them into here. So let's go ahead and show what that would look like. So if those pi electrons moved into there, we would now have Again, our hydrogen, our electrophile, these pi electrons, and then these pi electrons right here. So once again, let me go ahead and highlight those. This time I'll use blue. So these pi electrons are going to move over to here. And once again, we're taking a bond away from a carbon. This time, it's this top carbon up here. So that's the carbon that's going to get the plus one formal charge like that. So these are all resonance structures. And remember, the actual cation would be a hybrid of these resonance structures. And we call, we call that hybrid a sigma complex. So you have a positive one formal charge delocalized over three carbons in your sigma complex. All right, so the next step in the mechanism, I'm just going to redraw the first resonance structure that we did here. So I'm going to go ahead and redraw that down here. So let's go ahead and show the first resonance structure. So in our first resonance structure, we had our hydrogen here, our electrophile already bonded to our ring. And we had a positive one form formal charge on this carbon right here. Well, remember, the catalyst had formed a complex 
uh, and uh, I represent it like this. So something bonded to your catalyst like that. So let's just go up here and uh, refresh our memory. All right. So right up here, when we generated our electrophile, right, we also generated this catalyst complex up here. So some, so Y bonded to a catalyst. So I have Y bonded to a catalyst down here. And you could think about this as functioning as a base, or it's going to accept a proton. So I could show these electrons in here taking this proton. And if it takes that proton, that leaves these electrons behind. And those electrons are going to move in here to reform your benzene ring and take away that positive one formal charge. So let's go ahead and show that. So we now have our benzene ring back and our electrophile is now bonded to our ring and the proton has left. So the electrophile has completely substituted for that proton. Let's follow those electrons again. So the electrons in magenta in here. So those are the ones that are going to move in here to reform your aromatic ring. So deprotonation of the sigma complex restores the aromatic ring. And so we have a stable product here. So the other product, um, you could think about the this Y here is now going to be bonded to that proton. So you could have the Y here bonded to that proton. And you could highlight those electrons. You could say that these electrons right here right, are now these electrons. And taking those electrons away from the catalyst would, of course, regenerate your catalyst. And so it's free to then catalyze another reaction. And so this is, uh, this is the general mechanism for electrophilic aromatic substitution, which the reaction that we're going to see are pretty much going to follow this general mechanism.